thousand women are pregnant right now in Gaza. Around 180 babies are being delivered daily. 5,500 women are due to give birth within the next month. It's estimated more than 800 of them may suffer complications. Imagine, suddenly, being ordered to leave your home, everything you built and worked for, your safe space. Now you live here, one among hundreds of thousands, in a tent, in open land, during winter. You have no job, no income, you've been displaced again and again. You have a family, but you cannot provide any of life's basic needs, and a baby has just arrived. Camp nursery is sprayed on this wall. It's a shelter newly set up for new mothers and their babies. In these winter months, concrete walls and a proper roof make a huge difference. Though this initiative is small in scale, it provides essential help to mothers with babies, from infant milk, heating and clothes to both mothers and babies, in addition to the simple care provided by us, midwives. I gave birth to my child 15 days ago. We are living in tents in this fiercely cold weather. My baby has been suffering respiratory infections since birth. I was not able to keep him warm. I had to take him to the hospital. But other babies needed more attention. That is why he was discharged. This initiative came just in time. Now we have some clothes, diapers and milk. Thank God. The mass influx of displaced people in Tarafa means the remaining functioning health facilities simply cannot cope. Before the war, Rafa had 600 baby delivery cases every month. Now we're nearing 2,700 cases, with 70% normal and 20% C-section. Hospitals are forced to discharge mothers and babies two hours after the delivery to make room for others. New lives born into a war zone. And even if and when the war comes to an end, there will be very little left standing for people to return to. Most of Gaza's infrastructure that sustained life in the Strip has been destroyed. Instead of these cries, it could have been dead silence if it wasn't for grandmother Ilham. Asil Qabaha was in labor after midnight. Trying to get to a hospital, a closed Israeli military checkpoint stood in their way. Trapped, Ilham turned the car into a delivery room. I delivered the baby, but the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck, so I cut it and gave him to his mom to hold. I was embarrassed. A lot of men were around me, but my fear for the baby was stronger. My oxygen levels were dropping, and I didn't want to lose him. This was not Ilham's first checkpoint delivery. It was during the second Palestinian Intifada. A woman was in a car shouting, I delivered the baby, but I can't remember if it was a boy or a girl. Both the mother and baby Shamech are in good health. But not every story has a positive end. Rula Shteye shows us her daughter's birth certificate. Next to it, a death certificate on the same day in 2003. Along with her husband Dawood, Rula remembers their fear at this Israeli checkpoint, a few minutes drive from their home in Burin in the north of the occupied West Bank. Soldiers asked her to sit quietly. The eight-month pregnant lady was anything but that. She started shouting, I gave birth, followed by silence and another shout, I think she died. When I wrapped her and I held her to my chest, I said, she's most likely dead. She started turning blue, but I wasn't sure. I had hoped that she would still be alive. Baby Mira lived and died at the checkpoint. I had to cut the umbilical cord with two stones. Then they allowed me to take her to the hospital. Three years later, the couple had another daughter. They named her Mira. Too. Mothers about to give birth and needing to go to the hospital might not know which gate is open and which one is closed. It was a total closure when 20-year-old Qassam Bakir was born in 2003. He's not sure exactly where, but thinks it's around this area. 
there was an Israeli checkpoint here, now removed. I had hoped to be the last child to be born at a checkpoint. Look at us now, 20 years later. We hear stories we know too well. His wish is not happening, with baby Shamech being the last baby we know of born at a checkpoint. Shamech means standing tall. One day his family hopes he will live up to his name and walk freely in a land with no checkpoints. <laughs>